Water Tribe, Unalak's army is nearing victory in the Civil War. We literally have not seen a single battle of this Civil War take place, but okay. Where's Jinora? She's dead. Korra killed her. I should have never let Jinora enter the spirit world without me. I couldn't protect her. I'm so sorry, Pema. I, I tried to save her, but Unalak tricked me. You'd think after a long season of Unalak being an asshole, Korra would learn her lesson by now. To be fair, she really didn't have a choice. Hey, Mako. Hey. I want you to know that I will always be there for you. We are brothers, after all, even if one of us is a member of high society and the other one is a criminal. God damn, Boleyn. God damn, season two for fucking over Boleyn's character. Three more episodes and we're done with this. I was set up. Varric knew I had figured out he was hiring gangsters to pose as northern soldiers to get Republic seated to join the war. Varric hired who and the what in whichever way now? This line read is exceptionally long and difficult to follow. Probably was done that way to make Mako sound crazy. Where's Asami? She'll listen to me. I asked her to come, but she said it was too hard for her. You being in jail like this reminds her of her dad. Damn, add a tally to the Asami is incredibly depressed counter. Bolin, wait. If my theory about Varric is right, Something might go down tonight at your premiere. Promise me you'll keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, yeah, okay, big brother. Not sure if Mako's suggesting an attack is the greatest writing. He's a good detective, and we've seen that over and over, but this, at least to me, is just a wild guess that ends up being right. It could be that he knows Varric so well, but he doesn't doubt that he's gonna pay someone to attack the arena for more fame, but I feel like it was just a bit of a stumble in the writing. That insanity defense is definitely gonna work. Do you have to be so dramatic with it? This man put everything he had into closing this door. Should we wait another day? Korra still might come with reinforcements. We can't wait any longer. It's time we take back what is ours. It's time to take back our city. Yeah! Tonrock pretty much just said, fuck it, we ball. He wasn't kidding when they said they couldn't wait any longer. They went instantly. Oh man, hopefully we see some sick ass guerrilla warfare fight scenes. Uh -huh. The sweethearts of the big screen and Republic City's most famous couple, Bolin and Ginger. This is the first time we're seeing this guy since he was shot during Amon's attack, outside of narrating the intros. I am currently wetting my pants. And did you hear what Shiro said? We're Republic City's most famous couple. Bolin, you're a doll, but you're as dumb as the rocks you bend. We are not a couple. Fucking got him. Stop stuffing your mustaches with very cakes and get to your post. You got it, boss. You two are the pinnacle of refinement. Fucking got him again. There they are, my two most honored guests. Mwah! Varric, you didn't have to do all this for us. I wanted to. Mr. President, I took one look at your wife, and I knew that you were a man of exquisite taste. I'm not sure why Varric thinks flirting with the First Lady is going to get him on the President's good side. I doubt your propaganda is going to change my mind about going to war with the Northern Water Tribe. Oh, I think you'll be surprised how persuasive I can be. That's a really good Varric one-liner there. Incredibly threatening, but goofy and welcoming. Varric makes an awesome villain. Are you supposed to be eating that, Naga? That shit looks like chocolate. Thank you, wise sage. I will travel to Republic City and seek help. Did Varric get an actual seal for this scene? How did they even import that? Both water tribes are currently under the control of Unalak, and he and Varric aren't really friends at this point. Yes, I'm talking about seal importing. That's how bored I am with this episode. The seal line seemed a bit far-fetched, but the betrayal of this president is right on the money. Why did she get so into that line? Maria Bamford has like two line reads in this show and she puts everything into them. God damn. And hey, he seems into it. That was some really good seductive whispering, I'm gonna be honest. Hmm, uh, I like to eat the top off the vera cake first. I just try to shove the whole thing in my mouth at once. That's nasty. <laughs> But wait, where's Juji? Look, no! You can't die, Juji. Not on my watch. Okay, this is genuinely entertaining. He's lasered one chain and then he's dead? Oh, this is so beautifully terrible. These little side gags are more entertaining than the actual episode. It's okay, Nuktuk. At least I got to be <coughs> your friend. <laughs> Juji! 
I'm not crying, you're crying. I like the detail that Pabu's tail is twitching, as an untrained animal would do during a death scene. Are you okay? Yes, I just miss my friends. Everything is going so well for me, but it feels empty without everyone around. Core has gone, Mako's in jail, you're doing business lady stuff. Team Avatar's falling apart. This at least is a nice scene, ignoring the fact that this is literally the only stepping stone we get of Bolin turning back into what he was. This cake was dropped on the floor earlier for Bolin to slip on. Good attention to detail. This probably feels like home to Bolin. Having done the pro-bending stuff in season 1, he's all backed up in this corner, these three are ganging up on him, he knows exactly what to do. This is pretty obvious, but the big screen is reflecting everything that's happening during the fight to a certain extent, even when you don't notice it. No, don't splash near the speakers, you'll damage them, dude! This is a stacking foul, that's a hosing foul. God, these guys don't know how to play pro-bending at all. Who sent you? It was Varric. Please don't hurt me, Nugtuck! I think this is our cue to exit. Where do you think you're going? How did you get up there that fast? They're falling back! God damn it, we saw literally none of the fighting. That was not nearly as cool as I thought it would be. Ooh, I can't believe my boyfriend is a real life hero! Boyfriend? Wait, stop. I thought you said we weren't a couple. Okay, Ginger, fuck off. Bolin did something cool once, and now you're all over him? He did way cooler shit than that before. <laughs> Mako, I missed you so much. I'm not even gonna comment on it. You all know how much I hate the love triangle. I did some good things, too. Korra, who warned you about Unalak? I did. Bolin, who got you into the movers? I did. Asami, who saved your company? I did. Mako, who got you thrown in jail? I did. Oh yeah, I guess that was a bad thing. Hey, season two sucks, but at least we got Varric. <laughs> the twins' fighting style is fucking sick, dude. We get a few more scenes with them in combat, but their synchronized fighting is really slick and looks super cool. Hello, Tonrock. Looking for me? <laughs> Tonrock at this point has like seven broken ribs and internal bleeding. Well, after a boring episode, this action scene is really sick. Now that I've defeated you, your daughter is next. Holy shit, that was cool. Alright, well, aside from that ending scene, this episode was pretty boring. It promised a lot at the beginning. A second attack on the bending arena was foreshadowed by Varric, and Tonrak and his men attempted to retake their tribe, but what was set up and what was delivered were two entirely different things. We didn't even see the full attack, and the men that invaded the arena just tied two people up, tried to kidnap the president, and then Bolin obliterated them. Unlike Amon's terrorist attack, which was actively felt and genuinely scary, also a huge loss for a public city. Season 2 seems to have a recurring pattern where the episode in total is a bit meh, but the fight at the end rocks. This happened in Civil Wars Part 2, and it happened here. What also happened here is the classic problem with Legend of Korra, where the writers had a great idea of what needed to happen, but not nearly enough time to display the story. If we saw the action in the South Pole, and maybe if Raiko's attempted kidnapping was much more high stakes, this episode might be really cool. Basically, it's just Season 2 being Season 2. I'm gonna go watch Season 3 to clear my head and appreciate Legend of Korra at its high point. 
Hey, if you like this episode, subscribe. It really helps me out and keeps me motivated to make new videos. I also have an Instagram, Discord, and a subreddit. Go check those out if you want to see some bonus content and hang out with me and my fans. Patron shoutouts! If you want to be an episode ahead and help fund my dysfunctional time management skills, you can support me on Patreon. Link is in the description. Thanks to my top patrons, Typhire02, who is the best murderer in the state, the cops have no idea how good he is. Neferax, who spontaneously combusts whenever someone says the word bug. Dizzy Payne, who can read Minecraft enchantment table perfectly. And Velocity, who is building the largest satellite known to man by hand, even bigger than the James Webb Telescope. Thanks to my other patrons, Daniel Ruin, Drunk on Hugs, Nicholas Schultz, Graphite, and Nuktuk. Thanks guys! If you want to donate, link is below as usual.